Where to turn in such a world? Millions of parents are now finding some solace in what appears to be a counter-trend. It's a new media movement that claims to be good for infants. And whether we're talking about developmental DVDs like Baby Einstein and Brainy Baby, or 24-hour programming for infants and toddlers on TV, the idea is that good media is the best antidote to bad media. We don't get to decide how tall they'll end up or what their shoe size will be in two years. But how big their imaginations get? Is that your shirt? Well, we do have some say in that. The idea is that our kids would be all right if parents would simply turn their children away from the commercial clutter and turn them on to educational media. Because kids don't just grow up, they think up. But the question is, is any of this even true? There is not one iota of research evidence that shows that they teach children anything or that the children who experience these things at early ages are any different in terms of their educational capacity or their fund of knowledge later on down the line. It is a huge hundreds of millions of dollars a year business and they're selling it to parents' insecurities. You'll never get into college if you don't play your video game. They're basically letting parents think that if they don't get these things, their children will be behind. What will this home video end up being labeled? Kyle and Max in the car? <laughs> no, Kyle and Max playing. Cat, we want tea. Make that Kyle and Max increasing the size of their brains. The majority of parents think if they don't put their kids in front of media early and often, that they are going to be behind other kids. And even as this industry has been making big educational claims, it's been making even bigger profits. Sales of infant videos and DVDs purporting to be educational are expected to reach $7.8 billion by 2010. After her daughter was born, Julie Agner Clark searched for ways to share her love of music and art with her child. So she borrowed some equipment and began filming children's videos in her basement. The Baby Einstein Company was born, and in just five years, her business grew to more than $20 million in sales. Julie Eigner Clark. This is a billion dollar industry that is a complete and total scam. There's no evidence that a baby watching a DVD is learning anything. Educational videos aimed at babies may not be such a bright idea after all. A new study found that children who watch popular DVDs like Baby Einstein and Brainy Baby actually have poorer vocabularies. One researcher even said she'd rather have babies watch American Idol. The American Academy of Pediatrics has now for seven years recommended that there be no screen media use for children under the age of two. And this is for some very specific reasons. First of all, there is no solid scientific research evidence that children under the age of 30 months or two and a half years can learn anything from an electronic screen. A lot of media early may in fact change the way the brain develops. Three new studies out tonight are the latest to suggest that heavy television watching can hurt children's ability to learn. The more television infants and toddlers watch, the greater the chance they'll have trouble paying attention and concentrating during their very early school years. Researchers say hours spent in front of the TV only trains the brain to watch more TV. A child weaned on bright colors and rapidly changing images will find it tough to focus on a teacher During the first two years of life, their brain is rapidly developing. And what we know about optimal brain development during these first two critical years is that face-to-face -face involvement with other people, parents, siblings, other kids, interaction with other human beings, manipulation of the physical environment, trying to stack the blocks up or get a Cheerio in your mouth, creative, open-ended, problem-solving play is far better than the best edutainment software you could ever have. What's the most important thing for a zero to two year old? The single most important thing is the social dynamic, the bond that occurs, and the intimacy that occurs between mother and child. Forget the rest of it. That piece lays the bond of trust and the foundation for all higher learning later. 
that has to occur. So if you're sacrificing the trust, the bond, the attachment issues for the sake of having a baby Einsteiner computer or videos in the room, you're missing a huge understanding of child development. The space that is necessary to think is being jeopardized. You're immersed. You're outside yourself. You're taken out. When do you have quiet time and unstructured time? And when is a child able to be a child and, and play? Remember playing baseball until it got so dark you couldn't see the ball any longer? How about hiding and pretending you couldn't hear your name being called home to dinner? That was back, of course, when kids, and just about all kids, played outside starting the moment they got home from school. That was before Xbox, of course. A recent report from the American Academy of Pediatrics found that commercial media is radically transforming the way children play. The report found that even though free and unstructured play is essential to the cognitive, physical, social, and emotional well-being of children, the amount of time six- to eight-year-olds spend playing creatively has been declining dramatically over the past decade. And for nine- to twelve-year-olds over the same period, creative play has declined a staggering 94 percent. The thing that it's important to remember about creative play is that it's a foundation of learning. It's the foundation of critical thinking. It's the foundation of problem solving. It's the foundation of empathy and of you know, the experience of being something else. And it's the way that kids make life meaningful. What's happening is that children are being deprived increasingly of opportunities to exercise their imagination. Parents are being encouraged to hand babies cell phones because of the Sesame Street content or the Nickelodeon content. We now have you know, screens in the back of minivans and portable DVD players for toddlers. We're raising a generation of children who are never going to have the experience of having to amuse themselves or having to calm themselves down. And so they're always going to need a screen. And that's exactly where the marketing industry wants them. And when children play with toys that are based on media products, they play less creatively because they're not spurred to make up their own world. She's a fiesta girl. Move your arms up and down, shake your head. This go they're not spurred to make up their own storylines. What they do is they just regurgitate what they've already seen using products that are based on the film or on the television show. Every flip, every stick, every web sling and trick Spider-Man can do, now you can too with the Spider-Man stunt system. It's not real play. Their own imagination and their own past experience isn't evident. It's really just an imitation of what they've seen. You can be just like Superman. With a Superman Returns inflato suit, strap on the punch and crush gloves, and you'll hear the sound of every punch you throw and everything you crush. The world needs a hero. Are you ready for the job? Inflato suit accessory, you put it together, batteries not included, punch and crush gloves sold separately. The message kids get is that they can't play Harry Potter unless they have an official Harry Potter wand or they can't play some hero unless they have all of the paraphernalia that goes with it. Straight from the movie comes Jack Sparrow's gear. Battle with the Clash and Flash sword with lights and sound effects. Fire the electronic pistol. Be Jack Sparrow. And in a way, they're being told their imagination isn't good enough. It's not good enough to pick up a stick and turn it into a wand. You have to have the real wand. It's OK, the newest, greatest robot toy that does everything for you, and you don't have to play with it anymore. It just plays by itself. You watch it. Great, and at a cost. I don't even put the thing together anymore. It's no model making, no thinking, no coloring, no painting it. It's just all ready for me and ready to go. The fundamental message that I need something outside of myself in order to play is, is really harmful and tragic because it starts to take play out of children's hands. So the kids need more and more and more in order to be able to play and in order to be happy. We're creating a future generation of super consumers. Rather than consuming less, our children will consume even more than the baby boom generation or the generation Y or X. What does that mean for our future, for our well-being, and for their well-being?